I was stuck on a problem. And this is a problem some of you probably had experience. Out of curiosity, show of hands real quick. How many of you ever seen those three corded lines that go on the windows? They got the three corded. <laughs> oh yes, some of you have. I hear some laughing, so you know. Those things get tangled really, really bad. Especially if you have a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and a seven-year-old. Those things get wrapped around. They can get fitted through each other in the most amazing sort of messed up knot you have ever seen. Very, very complicated sort of mess of a knot. So I had the wonderful task of untangling those knots last week because my wife wanted the blinds to go all the way down. I said, okay, honey, well, I'll, I'll work. And an hour and a half later, I have accomplished my task. So what about your stories? Do you tell stories that end up in a tangled mess of a knot that no one can untangle? Do you have to have your audience try to untangle what it is you just said because you said it so poorly? I don't know, that's one of the reasons I joined Toastmasters, probably one of the reasons several of you have joined Toastmasters, so you can share a story that makes sense. And the most sensible stories are usually ones that are simple. I like good simple stories. Why? Well, because they're easy to understand. One of my favorite stories you can read about in the Bible, talking about Peter, shortly after Christ was crucified, he had Peter. He gave up and he shared a story to a whole bunch of people. 3,000 people then became a Christian as a result of his story. Now, Peter made that story complex, probably wouldn't have had the same result. It was a simple story, 3,000 people go, ooh, wow, that's a great story, I like that story, I'm going to respond to that story. You know, one of my stories that I, that I have shared a few times, not to this group, but a few other people, started back in January. So here I was, I was in Las Vegas. So have you been to Las Vegas? Gambling capital of the world. But I was smart, see? I was smart. When I went to Vegas, I made sure I only had $75 in the bank account. <laughs> that was smart. Downside is, that was all the money I had in the world was $75 in the bank. But needless to say, the wife is not happy with me going to Vegas with $75 in the bank account. So I got three kids, like I mentioned, seven, five, and three. It's kind of hard to feed a family of five, <clears throat> me in Vegas, on $75 for the week. It was a rough spot in my life. Wasn't good. Wasn't good. But here I am today, now making over $10,000 a month. Much, much better. The wife is a lot more pleased, shall we say. But I like that story. It's simple. Highlights where I was, which is one thing a lot of stories do. Highlights where you were. So that's where I was. $75 in the bank, now making over $10,000. There's a lot of details in there on how I ended up doing that and what I ended up having to learn to become a person making $10,000 a month. It's a good story. It's a good journey. But that story relates to people. How many in this room have ever been in that tough spot financially at some point in their life? A lot of people have. It's a very, very common thing. You know, people can get depressed over that. Oh, man, you know, life just sucks. I ain't got no money. I ain't seeing no family. I'm just me. You know, we've all been there. It happens. That's what I like about good stories. They relate. A simple story relates. A story from your past will relate to somebody. Kind of what we're talking about. Features, benefits, reactions. A story will help bring people along, which is why you need to make it simple. Now, if I had said, you know, here I was in January, and, and I was driving this car here, and I ended up going to Las Vegas, but I had to drive to the airport first and jump on this plane, and my plane broke, so I had to get off that plane to go to another plane. And while I was in Vegas, I had to go to Starbucks. But before I went to Starbucks, I was in this meeting over here, and I ended up with $10 worth of Starbucks gift cards, so I was able to eat while I was there. Oh, and by the way, I only had $75 when I was in Vegas. And my wife, she was over here, and she had three kids, and she had to go to the store, but didn't have any gas. And do y'all hear what I'm saying? Is that, did I just complicate the whole issue right there? Yeah. Did y'all have any idea what was going on? So wait, wait, go through here. It makes it hard. Don't be in a three-corded line telling a story. It doesn't work very well because nobody can understand what you're going for. So, stories about your past. Simple stories about your past. The key on past stories, how do you get it to relate to the present? Right? How do you get the past story to relate to the present? Because people can hear a story and come back with their own meaning. How many times have you all come back to the meeting the speaker probably didn't intend for you to come out with? I have. Because the speaker didn't 
didn't help me know what is it you want me to come out with. So be careful as you tell stories. Make them simple. Make them relate to the topic you want. Make them relate to the point you're trying to get the audience to come to. One of those fun things you get to practice in Toastmasters, right? How do we make sure our audience got what we wanted them to get? One of my personal favorites, well, ask some questions. Did you understand what I was doing? That who has been at the $75 point in their life? All right? Make sure you relate it back to where they are as an audience. Always keep the audience in mind. And we have the other second story of our lives. The fun part. This is one I, I really enjoy thinking through and sharing about. This is one I, I do whenever I'm in the car on the way home. I have a 45 minute drive home, so I'm rolling this story. The story of our future. That's a good story. Why it hasn't been told yet? The story of your future has not been told yet. So what you do now in the present helps you learn and identify what is your story going to say in the future. And here's another good thing on this one. Keep it simple. Don't complicate your future story. All right? Don't complicate the future story. If you complicate your future story, what are you going to end up with? Any thoughts? A mess. Yeah, you're going to end up with a mess. If you complicate your future story now, you, what you end up with is a mess of a story that no one can relate to and you can't share because it's so convoluted and screwed up you can't figure it out. So, how do you keep your future story simple? Well, the first step to keeping your future story simple. Find out what you want your future story to say. <coughs> you just spend some time doing that. A lot of people like all those dreams. Who here has spent some time daydreaming? Oh yeah, who loves the daydream? I do. Like I said, I got a 15 minute drive home. I love the daydream. Start thinking about this, thinking about that. Oh, you know, if I had 10 grand here, I could go on this trip here. Just find a dream. We all have dreams and aspirations. That's your future story. Call it your legacy sometimes. You have kids. What do you want your legacy to say? You know, in this audience today, we have several. We have younger folks like myself, we have you, we got older folks like Lee. <laughs> you know, all of us still have a future story to tell. I, I see my grandparents. My granddad is 93. My grandma is 91. Nice, good, ripe old birds they are. They still have a future story. Why? Well, they're not dead yet. If you're not dead, you have a story to tell somewhere in the future. What do you want that story to say about you? What do you want your kids, your grandkids, to learn about your life? That's the kind of story worth crafting right there. What do I want to teach my kids and my grandchildren about me, about what it is to be a person living on this earth, about what it is to carry on the family name of Van Horn or Edgington or Burlingame? What's that mean? How does your future fit into the story that you want to leave? A good friend of mine, Bruce Wilson, he's actually my, my personal business coach, has a story. He talks about his dad. Dad was a raging alcoholic, very abusive home, horrible, horrible stuff growing up. But he didn't let that dictate his story. He changed his story around. Now he's an international coach. Travels all over the world coaching businesses, coaching owners, speaking. Brilliant guy. Just love him to death. Kicks me in the tail on a good regular basis myself. He's from New Zealand. But he didn't let his past story dictate his future story. He changed it. Why? Because he can. Each and every one of us in here can at any point in time change our direction overnight. You may not be able to change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction. So if you change your direction overnight, what happens to your destination? Well, it changes a little bit. And if you keep those changes going, your destination continually changes over time to whatever it is you want it to be. But anyway, you do it. Do it like that. So I want to know I'm going to do this, and the next day you know, you can go over here. Quick question. Where do geese fly in the winter? Anybody? To the south. To the south. Do they do that every single winter? Yes. Yeah, without fail. Can a goose change its direction in the winter? Nope. Why not? Well, it's a goose. That's what geese do in the winter. They fly south. It's just what they do. We are humans. Where do we go in the winter? Well, if you're older, where do you go in the winter? South, right? You go to Florida. You pack your RV and go south. If you're young and you want to see snow and go skiing, where do you go? Yeah, you go west or north, right? You go all sorts of different places. We can go wherever we want in winter. Why? Because we can change our direction like that. 
Up to us. Choose where we want to end up. So in your personal story, look at your past. Figure out your past story. Why it helps you relate to people in the present. Helps you identify people who go, you know, I need to change my story. This is my story from the past. $75 in January. I don't want to have that story anymore. That's not a fun story. Why? Because you can't buy things. You can't do a tech deal on $75. It's not fun. I don't enjoy it. $10,000 a month, now that's a lot more fun. You know, I can spend some money at $10,000 a month without worrying about stuff. If I change my story, figure out where I want to be, go, okay, I need to do this, this, and this. So you look at that, you go, okay, what do I need to read? What do I need to change? <laughs> Is it knowledge I'm missing? Is it a skill I'm missing to become the person I want to be, to leave the story I want to leave? Is it a personal belief you have? You want to change your income, or what are your beliefs around money? Do you believe money is the root of all evil? Well, then you might have to work on that, because if money is the root of all evil, you're never going to have a lot of it. Because you don't want to be evil, right? So you got to look at your beliefs. Is it a value? What do you value? If you value family, job, and a good time, and money's way down here on the list, you're ever going to have a lot of money. Well, you don't value it. It's not important to you, which is okay. That's not bad. If you value money, family, and then friends, well, guess what? You're going to have a lot of money. Why? Because it's higher value. So look at your value structure. You need to adjust your value structure moving forward. What about your identity? How do you identify as a person? I am worth $10,000 a month. I am worth $5,000 <coughs> Neither one is wrong. It's your personal identity. How do you identify? Do you identify as a person worth more, worth less? It all works. And in your environment, you need to change your environment. Who do you surround yourself with? Because they have a huge impact on where you end up. Who do you surround yourself with? That's it. It's not complex. It's not hard. It's very simple and straightforward. So look at yourself. Look at your past. Keep your past stories fairly simple. Don't complicate them. <clears throat> look at your future. What do you need to change now to have the future you want to have? Make simple, everyday changes. Nothing hard. Keep it simple. Love that. Life is really fairly simple. One foot in front of the next. Look up every now and again. Figure out, okay, where do I need to change my direction over here? Good. And just course. Look at your past. You know, that's where it was. Don't want to go there anymore. That's no fun. But just course. Life is simple. It really, really is. Mr. Cousins.